Let's check the weather. All right, no clouds and moon this week. Tonight, I'm gonna photograph a nebula, and I want you to come with me. But first, let me tell you my life story. Get along with it! Gotcha. Tonight, we're gonna photograph the Orion Nebula. It's one of the brightest and easiest nebulae to shoot. So let's go ahead and talk about the gear and how we're gonna set it up. All right, let's build our rig from the ground up. First, we're gonna need a good, sturdy tripod. This is a video tripod that a friend of mine gave me, and it has served me well. Next, we'll need to take our star tracker, like this is the iOptron Skyguider Pro. And we'll mount this on top like this. And now we'll take this outside and we'll get it good and set up facing north. We'll find the North Star and aim this right up at the North Star. And then we'll look through our polar scope here and just try to see if we can find the North Star in there, move it around till we see it in there. And inside of the polar scope, we see a reticle or a circle. It's kind of like a clock. And we're going to line up the North Star and position it uh, in a certain location in the circle. And we'll use an app. I'm gonna use Polar Finder for Android to know where the North Star needs to be. Once we're polar aligned, we're gonna put the mounting bracket on the front like this. Screw it down, make sure it's good and tight. And we've got a little ring right here that works as a clutch that tightens it. So we're gonna tighten that down. All right. Now let's talk about the camera and lens. I'm just using a Canon 6D. You can use any DSLR camera, really. And to photograph the Orion Nebula, I want a lot of zoom. So for my lens, I'm using the Tamron 150 to 600 millimeter lens. So this is what I'll be shooting with tonight. Let's add this to the top of the mounting bracket. Now we need to balance this setup. We don't want any extra strain on the motors of the Star Tracker, so it needs to be perfectly balanced. This is a two-step balance setup. Let's check it out right now. First thing we need to do is loosen up the clutch right here. And we can see that this is not balanced. So let's go over here to our counterweight. And there we have it, that is balanced. Now the next step in balancing is to turn the camera towards the direction it'll be facing. Let's say Orion is gonna be that direction. We'll go ahead and do that. The Orion will be that way. Tighten everything down. Now let's see if it's balanced here. And it is not, it is trying to fall this way. So what I need to do is loosen this right here and pull the camera back in the saddle just a bit. Tighten that down. And there we go. That is balanced and you can feel it just moves smoothly and with, with ease. Now the next thing we're gonna add is our intervalometer. This is not only going to tell the camera how long to open the shutter for, but it's gonna tell it how many pictures to take. And I usually just Velcro it right to the side of the tripod, plug it in right here. Another thing that's extremely important is a dew heater strap. Especially if you live in a place like, like here in Mississippi, where even no matter if it's summer or winter, your lens just gets soaking wet after about 30 minutes. Just wrap this around the lens like this and plug it into either a USB battery pack or if you're lucky enough to be able to do this from your yard, just run an extension cord out and plug it directly into AC power. Well, that was easy enough to do in the office, but now let's go outside and do it for real. First, we gotta figure out where the Orion Nebula is. Let's take a look in Stellarium real quick. If you're a fan of stargazing, you may be familiar with the constellation Orion, most notably Orion's belt, three stars in almost a straight line. But what you may not be as familiar with is the sword or sheath in the constellation, right here. And that is where you'll find the Orion Nebula. Let's zoom in here. That middle star is not just a single star. It's a collection of stars surrounded by a huge cloud of dust and ionized gas charged by the radiation of the stars around it. And all this red here is hydrogen. And inside this nebula, you find star nurseries where we can observe stars and even solar systems being born. So next time you look up at Orion, don't think it was just a group of stars. Think of it as a living universe. And that is why I love this hobby. This is a tool to unlock the hidden secrets of the cosmos. Now let's go shoot.
Okay, we've got everything set up. Now let's talk about camera settings. Camera settings, yay! For shutter speed, we're gonna put the camera in bulb mode. That way we can take exposures as long as we want. And we're gonna do that using the remote or intervalometer. Problem is, 60 seconds is about all this rig can handle before we get star trails. And even then, it's, it's kind of pushing it. So we're just gonna leave it at 60 and go from there. For the aperture, we're gonna leave it as wide open as this lens will allow, which sadly is f6.3. It's not gonna let in a ton of light, but that's, that's all we can do with this lens. And because of the small aperture and the short exposure time, our ISO is going to have to be an aggressive 3200. We're not gonna worry about white balance, we're just gonna leave that at auto. Now we're gonna aim up at the Orion Nebula and focus. Luckily, the entire constellation of Orion is very bright, so we can see it not only in the viewfinder, but also on the back of the screen, so it makes it so much easier to both find and focus. Okay, so I've got the nebula in frame on the back of my camera. Now I'm gonna zoom in with the zoom button here. I'm just gonna turn the focus ring until it's as small as possible. And when it gets really small, you can actually see a bunch of, uh, you can see some smaller stars coming into focus in the background as well, and that really helps. There we go. I think that's about as sharp as we can get, but I always like to try it one more time just to make sure. And the last thing we're gonna do before we take our test shot is check the polar alignment one more time. And I'm gonna use the help of this red lamp just to look in the back of the polar scope. And it's still perfect. All right, time for the test shot. Okay, I just want you to see what a test shot looks like on the back of the camera. This is not anything faked in Photoshop. This is what I took just now. Let's zoom in a touch. That is the Orion Nebula. So I'm going to set the intervalometer to take about 120 pictures or two hours worth of photos, and then we're going to look at the final picture. Quite beautiful isn't it? It's actually only my third attempt at a nebula. It's not perfect, the stars are misshapen and it's a bit noisy, but that's because I had to throw half of my photos away because of severe star trailing. My star trekker can't really handle 60 seconds. That's okay. This just came in. This is my new auto guider. It's going to greatly improve the accuracy of my star trekker and I cannot wait to share that with you. If you liked this video, please hit the like button. And if you like this kind of content, please subscribe. There'll be more coming your way very soon. As always, watch out for snakes. I mean, stay spacey and good night.